What's up, guys? This is TJ Horansky, Chicago correspondent for APTV here at Rye Fest in Chicago with Ryan and Sean of Yellow Card. How's it going, guys? It's going well, thank well, you. Well, thank you. Excellent. So you guys just started the Ocean Avenue Acoustic Tour last week. Uh, tell us a little bit about how a full acoustic tour, what sort of challenges that presents as opposed to doing a full band tour. Um, well, I'm not really awesome at guitar. I, I, I'm just kidding. No, I'm, I'm okay. But... Uh, the reason I say that is because um, everything you do when you play acoustically uh, is much more um, evident and much more like uh, transparent. You know, you can hear everything. So every time I do my usual like, hey, you guys, you're welcome for that one. It's like, oh, yeah, the audience could really probably hear that one this time, too. Not just them who are going to laugh at me when it's over. But um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, it's just you know, we we got to we had to rehearse really really hard for for this and and um, and make sure that we were ready to perform the songs the best because we knew that everything was going to be heard, you know. So um, I mean, his doesn't even have frets. I can't imagine how hard it is for him. Yeah, you know, just the the general nakedness and vulnerability, and you know, they're in Yellow Car we have a human element, and uh, you know, we're not we're not robots. So uh, just you know kind of sprinkling that in with the the songs and the singing with the audience uh you know that part is is always you know the ego is difficult to swallow as as an artist it's like hey you're, you're gonna make mistakes but i think really the 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 plus side is the intimacy with the audience and everyone singing along and and, and you see everyone's faces and you know they know what song's coming up next because you know we're playing ocean avenue top to top to bottom so it's it's uh there are pluses and minuses but uh a lot of pluses on this tour uh, so for this tour, you guys brought out Jeff Rickley from Thursday. Now, a lot of Yellow Card fans may not know who Thursday is, so tell us a little bit about what went behind the decision to bring Jeff on this tour. I think we pretty much just got an email saying that Jeff was inter really interested in doing the tour and wanted to be on the tour. And, and for us, I mean, we kind of were like, well, that's amazing. It's awesome, um, first of all. And second of all, that is going to make us look so cool. <laughs> to have Jeff from Thursday on our tour. So um, it was kind of a no-brainer for us, you know. Was, we're, we're really honored that, that he wanted to be a part of this. And, and it's cool to get to know him, too, because, I mean, we know Thursday from back when we were all touring together uh, more than, than we do now, I mean, in the, in the mid-2000s, you know. Um, but he's on the bus with us, and, and we're just getting to hang, and he's such an awesome dude, really gets along with our crew really well. So um, it's great. Great. So, uh, Ocean Avenue Acoustic, the album, came out about a month ago. Um, tell us why you guys decided to do an acoustic album as opposed to like a reissue with some new songs. A lot of some bands are, are doing that. Tell us what went behind the decision to do acoustic album. And then, are you guys planning on doing this again for Lights and Sounds or Paper Walls? Uh, so tell us what sort of the thought process was behind that. Sean was just like, all right, it's time for people to hear, hear me, okay? We're doing it. <laughs> No, I'm tired of all this distortion <laughs> guitar crap that Yellow Card does. It's, I want a moment. This is my moment. Yeah. No, um, I'm just kidding. I think really what we wanted to do was just enhance the tour. I mean, I think it was much less about selling a record. Um, as uh, you know, it, it was more. Uh, we we recorded when you're through thinking say yes acoustic um, a couple years ago and we did that on our own time and it was pretty stressful actually we were we were stoked about it but it was hard to get it done it was in between tours it was um, finding a place to record here and there because we were just doing it on our own and none of us really have a central location studio wise to record of, you know that we own or that we have so um, this time around we we sort of thought it up a little earlier we were able to put get hopeless records to to actually provide us with a pretty proper recording budget for the album so we could get in the studio and um take it kind of to the next level with using the drums and the bass and and uh full string section and I, that's my favorite part of the record you can just hear all the strings just ripping the whole time i love it we kind of had a um a saying during the mixes mixes and stuff my eric uh, eric taliba he's um uh, has been our engineer for all of our records with Neil Avron. Uh, he and I, Eric and I, produced the record, and we had kind of a saying: "String heavy was going to be our thing throughout." You know, to let that kind of drive the songs. And um, so, what, but anyways, back to what I was originally saying is that we wanted it to be something where, instead of just going, "Oh yeah, the record's been out for ten years, and everyone's doing ten-year anniversary tours, so we should do one too." Uh, while we thought we should do one, we wanted it to be something a little, a little more, and a, you know, a little more special, something to remember it by and, and by doing this acoustic thing I think live it also makes it like 
not only new for us, like it's really fresh for us, even still, I mean, we've been on the tour for a week, but every night I think we're all still like, Ooh, you know, like super nervous, and like we got to get this right. And that keeps it really fresh for us. And, and also for the fans who have, with the exception of, you know, five or six songs on Ocean Avenue that we haven't played in a long time. I mean, they've heard all these songs a hundred times electric. So it's something cool for them to, to see the songs in a different way. Um, so I think the record was really a, a supplement more than anything else uh, for the tour. Uh, so uh, I know I know Brian, you're into fantasy football. I know Sean, you're a big football fan too. Way more into fantasy football than me. So. I got okay, well I then, got I'm, I, I mean, I, I, I dabble, but he is, he loves it. Okay, well then, this is for Sean specifically. Then, week two coming up. Uh, who do you have on your team? Who do you like? Who are some of your sleeper picks for fantasy? Uh, well, you really have. Do, to, do you do you have Peyton Manning? You really have to. Well, hold on. I kinda He has too many leagues to answer this question. So you, you have to analyze just, just how pick many your favorite league though. How many <laughs> leagues I'm in right now. Go with now. the one that you're in with your friends back so, home. So okay, I that's the that's the one, you know? So we got um so I got a you know a couple leagues with, with uh, I'm doing the absolute punk um charity league that uh Thomas Nassif and, and Dan from the Wonder Years set up. That's great. And then I got one with, you know, some guys that we toured with. My problem is I hate rooting for other people, so it's like yeah. it really hurts deep down. But my buddy's back home. It's like a buy-in league. There's a wait list. And, uh, and Peyton Manning, like, just, you know, I, I was going to grab him second round. And he went first round. Like, a lot of young yahoos, they don't really know what they're doing. So you kind of had to, like, you know, mix in some experience and kind of go with the gut. Um, so I got Drew Brees, which is a great pickup. And uh, Joe Flacco is starting, starting kind of slow, but uh, he'll have a good later season. So you don't think so? It's not going to happen? <laughs> All right, the camera's shaking. But uh, we're not I'm, Ravens. No, I'm not a Ravens fan either. That's, that's and, the problem uh, with fantasy football. I know. Is, you um, have to root for teams that you hate. Which and is, you don't like these people anyway. And you're like, oh, I have to pick. Yeah. So <laughs> I definitely got I got stuck with some tight end. I went I went for the for the Zach Dudfeld from the uh, from the Patriots. I got duped on that one. But really, I'm loving the I'm loving the Wes Welker, Jordy Nelson. Oh, yeah. You know the great quarterbacks. You know finding great wide receivers. And uh, so I, I got really really lucky in the in the wide receiver department. And uh, Alfred Morris, Marshawn Lynch, they kind of let me down first week, but Marshawn I think Lynch, dude. that's okay. He's they're, they're, we're gonna, it's, it's only week one. We're, we're gonna the passing game is is hot. The running game you got to iron the kinks out. So uh, that that's where I'm at, and uh, so I'm first in one league, and I'm dead last in the other. And in the words of Ricky Bobby, if you're not first, you're last, and I'm both. So. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so, so, Sean, this is going to be a question for you again as well. Um, about a year ago, you announced that you were diagnosed with thyroid cancer and you had the surgery. And the support from the fans has been really amazing to see. Strong for Sean. Uh, tell us a little bit. Give us a little update how the treatment's been going and how you've been feeling. Yeah, right now I'm just like actively surveilling my body and health and, uh, you know, being in Yellow Card and, and having the, the guys in the band support me and the fans. Uh, it's amazing therapy and haven't really had any low moments, um, you know, in, in over a year, and, and I have a great team of doctors looking out for me. But it's really just kind of like maintaining the balance. Like my body was one way, and now the chemistry and everything is different. And uh, you know, putting out Ocean Avenue and, and hearing the changes in my voice, and just really having the support of the guys just to kind of keep everything, you know, afloat. So I'm I feel good. I, I don't have an all clear, but I'm obviously working very hard to to take care of myself and, and get my health back. To a point where I don't have to consciously make an effort. I just want to be able to manage it like a normal person, and you know. But I'm not, you know, going out partying. You know, the, obviously the big life changes to be responsible. Health is most important. I love my job. I love my life, and and I'd like to continue that for a good two, three hundred years. I think that's, you know, that's <laughs> fair. It's just, you know, just a little maintenance here and there. Medicine, man, you know. Yeah, my high level of income. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, cause we're yeah, musicians. Right. Um, but yeah, no, we I mean, rock music. I, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm working really hard and I have just amazing people all, all around my life, just, uh, supporting me and, and, and rooting for me. And, and I'm trying to be as responsible and healthy as possible. And that's, that's the most I can do. And, and we got a big show today and we got a great tour right now. And so life is good. Definitely. Definitely. Which one? My, the, my high level it's the same one, man. I'm with Talladega Nights. Talladega today. Nights. That's for right. some reason, for some reason, just Will Ferrell that's is just like he's he's ingrained in there. If you can chew, chew big red, then f you. Yeah, <laughs> cool. Thanks, Sean. Uh, Thanks. So, so one more question for you guys, sort of, end on a lighter note. Um, one of my favorite stories that you guys tell is back in the day, 
you guys are playing a show at the Fireside here in Chicago. And Ryan almost pooped his pants on stage. I almost pooped my pants, and I had to poop in the Fireside Bowl bathroom. I'm so sorry. That's awful. It's still healthy. It's still just... Ah! Can't. No. So, aside from near catastrophic ball movements, um, what are some of your favorite things about playing in Chicago or favorite uh, experiences playing in Chicago? I mean, it's one of those places that just, you know, it's you can't really have a, a, a number one. It's just too hard to say. This is the best place in the world, but it's on the list of places that would qualify as number one. I mean, we've always, you know, no matter where we're playing, what venue we're playing, or what we're doing here, it's just always, there's so many... Um, long time yellow card fans here in Chicago. Um, I think something that helped us out with that was the fact that um, our first officially booked tour, like our, our, our booking agent, Corey Christopher, she's, she's from, here. she's, yeah, she's from Chicago. She, um, she's been with our band from the very, very beginning. She was the first, you know, person outside of the band to, to work with or for the band. Um, and, uh, so our first booked tour was um, Rise Against Mad Caddies and, and us and uh, who was opening? I don't remember. I think like, so long ago. We're I mean, there was an opener, but yeah, it was. I yeah. can't remember, but anyway, they're irrelevant. It's just a long time. Like, yeah, ago. it was. I, that's all it was. Twelve years ago. But either way, so we were on tour, touring. You know, we were touring the country and more importantly, playing in Chicago um, on on our first like real booked tour with a Chicago native band, and I think. That really attracted a lot of a lot of people to our to our band here in Chicago early on, and and um, you know it's, Chicago is a place you don't miss on a tour. Also, yeah. that's the nice thing; it's one of the places that you always go. So, you know, we've been always been building a, a fan base here, and and um, you know, it just I, I think today is going to be just mind blowing. I don't want to get my hopes up too much because whenever you do that, it's not. But I, it's hard not to today. I just think it's going to be with the lineup and. I don't know. It's going it's to be typical Chicago, I think. Like, having the yellow card memories, like, when we play House of Blues, is here is noted as the House of Stairs. But when we yeah. play there, the building is rocking. Totally. And there's a great list of, you know, friends here. We have Bad Religion and Fall Out Boy, and it's Friday the 13th. I mean, it could get a little weird, and, and we're going to make some memories. We did, we're weird in all the right ways. Yeah, yeah, we, we, yeah we did two, two nights at the House of Blues last year on our fall tour, which was really big for us at, at this point point in our career and I think we were like 30 tickets short of calling the whole thing you know both nights a sell out so I mean that was huge for us and uh, and and so I, I think to, you know I think tonight we're really gonna be it's gonna be a proud proud moment for yellow card for sure do you guys have a favorite deep dish spot I don't I don't no, we can't you, eat pizza on tour. I yeah, can't. It's not. I mean, it's not good for the the vocal stylings. Just cheese doesn't sit cheese well. and gluten. <laughs> it's just, well, it just like makes you know the vocal kind of like fill, and I'm, yeah, yeah. I need help as as much as I right, can right, do. Right, right. Got to be clear. Water, tea, fruit, vegetables. If we ever if we ever come to Chicago on just a vacation time, we'll, we'll seek out. Our, and usually the venue spot. staff is just like, this is the best. Yeah, sure. Don't question us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they we're know. gonna take care of yeah. you. Just eat it and shut up. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, guys. This is TJ, Senior Chicago Correspondent for APTV with Yellow Card.